What's up guys, Greg Benz. Today, I'm gonna to show you a complete luminosity masking workflow for one image, starting with a pretty dingy looking raw file, and we'll end up with a beautiful sunrise image of the lovely city of Amsterdam. Let's begin in Lightroom, where the first thing we wanna do is right click on our raw and simply choose to create a virtual copy. Now within this image, there are several things we need to do at the raw stage. We want more detail from the highlights in the sky. We need to extract a lot more detail from these buildings and warm it up. It's a sunrise image, so it really should reflect the glow of a sunrise. So let's begin by bringing down the highlights, maybe around 30 points or so, just to bring back some detail in those high clouds. Then we'll bring up the shadows considerably. I would say all the way to 100 is reasonable here. We'll add more contrast as we process it. I want to get as much detail as possible at this point. Let's warm it up now that we can see the detail. Probably all the way up to about 7300 I think looks good and then push the tint to match as well. Maybe around the 15 mark is pretty good. So at this point, we've got a nice starting point. I'd like to get as much color as I can from these clouds to begin with. I could bring down the highlights further, but I think they start to look a little bit flat. So let's not do that. Instead, go down to camera calibration. If you haven't seen my tutorial on camera calibration already, it's one of the best ways to extract color in a very subtle and beautiful way in your images. If you had more color to begin with, it'd be more dramatic than this, but bringing up the red and blue saturation sliders in this image brings out quite a bit more warmth. Look at how much warmer the shadows are here from before to after with camera calibration, bringing out that extra pop of color. And I don't wanna push up the vibrance anymore because I'm gonna start getting some weird blue shifts in the building. So I think this is pretty good to start, although I want to get more detail in the face of these buildings and I'd like to do it at the raw stage if possible. So I can push exposure up a little bit, maybe to around, oh, 0.65 here. It's, it's quite a big adjustment and it's starting to detract from the sky. It's also starting to push up the shadow values, revealing kind of a murky green in the water. So what we can do is create a radial gradient filter and drag that over the area where we want that extra exposure. So what I'm doing now is I'm undoing that exposure adjustment I just did, that 0.65 exposure adjustment. I'm going to remove it from everything other than the main part of these buildings here. I just drag these out, just getting a rough guess. This is a feathered radial adjustment, and right around there I think it's going to be good just to put the emphasis on these buildings. So now let's bring down the exposure by a roughly equal amount. So probably around that 0.6 mark there is pretty good. And I'd like to push down these corners a little bit more. I'm gonna drag down the highlights a little bit. Don't need to go too much, maybe about you know, minus 20 or so. Just keeps a little bit more color down below and creates kind of a nice vignette in the sky to warm it more towards the central part where the sun is obviously behind this building. We'll go ahead and close that. And I think we're now ready to move over to Photoshop. So I'm going to shift select both of these images, right click and choose to edit in open as layers in Photoshop. Now that we have our layers in the same document in Photoshop, I'm gonna drag the original raw down to the bottom where it's hidden from view and just rename it original. So we can refer to that later. We are not gonna use it for the edit, but just for viewing later. Now, when I look at an image like this, one of the first things I like to scan for is any distractions I want to remove because if I create luminosity masks based on dust spots or other problems in the image, then I might have to correct them later. And what I see here is there's actually a duck moving through the frame and it was about a four second exposure. So it's smeared across and not really helpful. It might even be two ducks. I can't quite tell from this, but I want to remove it. It's not adding to the image. So I'm gonna create a blank new layer. Let's just simply call this clone and then hitting J for our healing brush. I'm going to alt click on the edge here of this darker shadow line and use that as my sample point, maybe a little bit larger adjustment here. And you want to sample multiple times. When you have something like this where these edges are not necessarily aligned, you know, because this is kind of a tapered shadow. And so if I align on the left edge, it may not stay aligned by the time we get to the right edge. So just kind of playing with things to get a little better results here. And I don't need this to be perfect, but I would like to just minimize how much it might affect my image later if I need to change a luminosity mask. And already things are looking pretty good. Just one last little adjustment, just get the tip of that looking a little bit better. And I 
think that is good. So now zooming back, the next distraction I want to remove is going to be these lights. This orange streak of light coming from this light being reflected here is drawing way too much attention to itself. And some of these other lights are similarly drawing a little bit more attention than I'd like. So let's take a look at this up close. What we can do to get rid of it is use an HSL adjustment. So I'm gonna click on that icon in Lumenzia and open up the HSL adjustment. Let's switch over to yellows and bring that all the way down. It hasn't eliminated the color, so there must be a bit of red and you see the red edge. Simply grab this left edge, we'll open it up so that it's now selecting more of the red colors and yellows. We don't really need the greens here. And that is targeting that correctly. Now we can bring up the saturation to an optimal point. So I just push it down too far to begin and then I dial in the actual amount I want. Let's zoom back and take a look at the image from before and after. It is improving this reflection quite a bit. I might even go further. So going back to my yellows and knock it down just a little bit, right around maybe minus 35, not too much. And of course, it's affecting the entire image, red brick and especially the sky, taking away from that beautiful sky we've been working on. So what we can do is alt click on mask, that black mask hides everything, and now just hitting B for our brush, switch down to a smaller brush size, and we'll just paint it in selectively in the areas where we need it. And I have a soft brush, so I don't need to worry about being overly precise here. The effect is gonna be kind of softened out. Things like this red brick, I do wanna be careful not to make obvious changes in the saturation on them, but I'm not seeing any issue here. I think it's working just fine with the soft brush I have, but we've just done that little touch there. It's a subtle thing that just minimizes what's going on there. Zooming back now, the next thing I'd like to do is start to work on this sky. Let's grab a brightness contrast layer and on that layer, let's first add some pop to it by increasing the contrast. And then we'll pull down on the brightness to try and restore a little bit more detail. Look from before to after, how it does a nice job with that sky. The reflections down below are looking nicer, but of course it's dimming down everything. So what we need now is a selection or a mask to target this more appropriately. Let's alt click on mask and we'll create a mask for this skyline. I could just try and use the quick select tool. And by using that, if I zoom in, it looks pretty close, but as we look at the detail, these edges are looking really good, but then we have things like this little corner is missing, or this spot is missing. It's not excluding things like these dark wires. The bird is excluded. This bird is partially included. So the, the quick select, it's doing a good job and here it's kind of in and out of the rooftop. So those are the little things that if you go and print an image like this using a mask based on that selection, it's gonna have some telltale signs. It's a great place to start using a luminosity mask. So let's zoom back out. I hit Command D to deselect and let's create our first luminosity mask through a selection. We'll click on lights, which has a nice selection of the sky, but way too much of these buildings. Lights two is looking pretty good. It has the sky, all the transition edges are selected, but of course it has some building windows throughout it, which I'd like to avoid, but if we had to, they're easy to remove because they're not really touching the edges. They're pretty easy things to remove later if we have to. Lights three does a good job in the middle of the sky. It's not doing quite as good a job further out on the edges. If I had a critical job where I needed to be ultra precise, I'd probably start with this selection but I think we can get away in this one, starting with lights two, and we'll correct it as we need to. So go ahead and hit click the cell button to load it as a selection. I have Lumenzia configured to hide the marching ants by default, but we know that a selection is loaded because the selection button is now lit green. Hit B for a paintbrush, and using just white paint, we're going to paint across that sky. And you can see already that detail starting to flow back into the image. And once you've done a quick pass or two, you can switch to a split screen luminosity masking scenario so you can see both the result and the blended image, which just makes it easier to paint more precisely. And of course, I have painted in quite a few windows because that preview was showing that was gonna happen. It's got just too much bright content in those window edges. As I look at the blended image though, look at these top windows versus the next ones down, there's not much of an obvious difference. So honestly, even though I'm overpainting into those areas, we can get away with it here. It just works fine with this particular adjustment. So I don't think I would bother normally fixing this, but I'll show you how you can do it. So if you had an image where it did matter, you'll have an idea of what to do. And 
once we get this thing pretty close here, we now have good edges. So previously when we did a quick select, quick select was trying to do its best to guess what was sky content and what wasn't. At this point, I've now created a nice mask that makes it much more clear. And so let's switch to quick select. I hit the W key and now select the sky. And this selection is gonna be more precise than before. I'm gonna to switch to B for my brush. I don't need to go right down to these edges here. I'm just gonna use this as a rough selection to kind of help me quickly paint in white in the rest of this mask. I'd like to get the interiors of this a little darker so that that contrast adjustment comes through. And now with my quick select, again, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. We already got a really good edge through the luminosity selection. So quick select is just a bit of an aid here and the problems we saw the first time are not giving an issue. We can now invert this selection to paint out these buildings. So we go to select inverse. Now it's selected below. I'm hitting X to switch to black paint. And now I can paint out these areas that we previously included. And I have a relatively soft brush. I'll push it even softer. So 0% hardness is fully soft, meaning that as I get close to these edges, which aren't getting painted as much because my brush is feathered towards the edges, but as I get towards the edges, it's going to minimize how much I'm actually relying on that quick select. So even though I think the quick select is pretty accurate now based on using it from the luminosity mask that we created, if I'm not right about that, I'm protecting against any problems by the softness of my brush, just gently transitioning from one area to another. So this is gonna look just fine. And I could spend more time to make this absolutely perfect, but I wasn't seeing issues to begin with. I think that's gonna be just fine. Let's go ahead and close that view of the mask and deselect. Just looking at the image overall, you can see we pulled in a lot more detail in the sky. Now I'd like to do something similar for down below. If we shift click the mask to see the potential there, it can really bring down some of the sky values. So let's go to, well, I'm gonna start with a light selection and increase this. So to, yeah, I think it's gonna look good. We'll use a brush here and now switching to white paint with our brush just bringing in that sky detail that we wanted to bring down a bit. Let's look before and after, we can do it one more pass to get even darker. And then I'd like to bring down some of these shadow areas. I don't want to paint over the, the windowsill reflections, but just the shadow areas. So let's deselect and see how this brightness contrast layer also darkens everything else. Well, now I'd like to paint in these shadow areas between the buildings. So I'll click on something like darks five which is now selecting those areas without affecting window sills very much. Load that as a selection, hitting B for my brush, and now I can come through and just darken down those shadows a bit. I'm looking before and after with Command Z, you can see how we just removed some of that grunge in the shadows. And maybe one more quick pass across the middle there, just to further darken that. I think that gives it a little more nice contrast between the, the reflection there. I'd like to further warm the sky. And one way we can do that will deselect create a new solid color fill layer and go sample from some color you want to use in the sky. Click on the saturation and slide it all the way up to 100%. When we click OK, it's set to soft light and blend mode. So it's added that orange glow to everything in the image. Obviously, I don't want it everywhere. I just want it in these areas where I've got sky reflection. We've already created a mask on this lower layer. So if we hold down Alt and hover right between the layers, we get this clipping us cursor. I click on that. Now I've clipped this to what's below so we can see from before to after how it's coming through in the sky in a really nice way. Looking at that mask, there's a little spot up here I didn't get. I'm going to just freehand paint white to finish that. There was a little bit of color not coming through. So let's alt click this back. And that's looking pretty good. Obviously we need to reduce the amount, but it's in the shadows of these buildings as well and not just in the sky. So in this case, I'd like to maybe mask some of this back out. So we'll create a white mask, and now we need to paint black on these shadow areas. So let's go click on the darks mask. Something like darks forward looks to be pretty good. Click on the selection button to load it as an active selection. Selecting our mask, and we've got our black paint, and we'll just paint right across this. So we're just simply removing it from the mask here. And now we can deselect and now I want to take this result, which is obviously targeting the sky up above and the water below, but much too strongly. 
and dial it back considerably. We go all the way back down to right around 20%, I think is, is pretty good. We can see from before to after, how just adding a nice glow in the sky, nice glow in the reflected sky down below without changing the color of those shadows. And we took advantage of the fact that this lower mask was correct everywhere except for the shadow areas. And then we painted those out with a mask on this top layer to clean those up. Next up, I wanna bring out more contrast in the face of this building. These window sills, I'd like to make them even whiter and brighter. So another brightness contrast layer should help do that. Let's open that up. Let's bring up our brightness and get those window sills looking pretty bright. But of course, we don't wanna do the background areas around them. We want to just lift the windows. So a mask that will target the window sills without the rest of the building would be ideal. This is a great place to use a blend if. So if we click the drop down in Lumenzia, go to blend if under, we can go click on something like zone D, which is gonna be a brighter mid-tone mask. And now it's targeting those mid-tones. If you're using CS6, just shift click the D button, that will load the blend if. And we can see from before and after, it's doing a nice job on those buildings. If we click the if button, we can preview where that is masking. So this is effectively the blend if mask on those windowsills. And of course, it's across the sky and the reflection. We'll have to mask that out in a moment. Let's take a look and see if we do any better. If we click on zone C, it's a little bit stronger. Well, it's a lot stronger. Let's click on if. Let's look at between zone D and C. I think C does a better job on these buildings. And it's just doing a nice job of lifting the detail there. So now all we need to do is paint it into the buildings without hitting the sky here. Let's go and alt click on master graded black mask. And we can now take advantage of the fact we've already masked the sky by command clicking on this mask. So we've reloaded this mask as a selection. Now we can invert it. And now we have a selection of these building areas, of course, with some mixed results in the buildings below, but we had selected the shadows so now it should be selecting the highlights in these as well. I'm gonna hit Command H to hide the marching ants just to make it easier to see. Hitting B for our brush and switching to white paint. Now painting right across the face of these buildings, you can see how much it really lifts those details. Just does a beautiful job of making those look much more interesting from before to after. And I might back off a little bit on this particular brick building. So let's deselect, I'm going to Take a look at a normal luminosity selection, maybe darks here, something like darks three. We'll use that. Let's load that as a selection. Switching over to black paint and then just over this particular building here, come down and that's going to reduce how much the bricks get lightened because I don't want to pull too much attention to the right. So you can see it's been excluded from the mask there. But overall, we have a really nice result here. Lastly, let's deselect. I'm gonna hit M for a rectangular marquee because we have a pretty blocky subject. Draw a rectangular selection and then click on vignette. Deselect that and now we've got our finished image. So we started with this dingy raw and ended on this beautiful finished image. To get more tutorials like this, be sure to click subscribe and ring the bell and head over to gregbenzphotography.com slash Lumenzia to learn more about Lumenzia and luminosity masks.